In this video, we will learn about algorithms and their properties. So an algorithm is just a specified steps of a procedure that takes a valid input and produces the desired output. For example, how might we describe an algorithm for finding the maximum value in a finite sequence of integers? So obviously there's no one right answer for this, but essentially what we want to do is we want to start by setting the first value, um, set the first value equal to our temporary, our, sorry, that said out, our temporary maximum. So essentially we're saying the first value in the sequence is our temporary max. Then what's going to happen? We're going to compare the second integer. To our temporary max. If the integer is greater then our temporary max. What are we going to do? We're going to set it as our new temporary max. So what's going to happen if it's not greater? Otherwise ignore. Essentially, we're just going to repeat these steps until no more integers exist. Now you might be thinking, well, this seems very involved and I'm not quite done yet. I've got one more step, but you might be thinking, well, this seems stupid. I'm just going to look at the list and determine which one's the biggest. But remember an algorithm gives us specific, specific steps to follow. And it really has a lot to do with computer programming. Computers aren't just going to look at a list and say, this one's the biggest computers look at algorithms, which can handle much larger groups of data than we can. So our last is basically just telling us how do we know what the maximum is. So when the process is over, when the algorithm, algorithm terminates and it terminates again, when we run out of numbers, the temporary max is the maximum integer. So this is an example of an algorithm that finds the maximum value in a finite sequence of integers. Obviously there is no value if it's an infinite sequence of integers. So we're going to look a lot at the pseudocode in this lesson and the next several lessons in chapter three, um, section one of your textbook. And pseudocode is just sort of an intermediary um, step so we're not going to look at Java programming or C++ or any of those, but this is sort of a step in the direction that you would go if you were going to actually code your, um, your program to come up with the maximum integer. So notice here, I've called this the procedure and the procedure is going to give me that I'm finding the max it's telling me what values I'm going to use, which are the values in a sequence and that they are integers and that I'm looking for, or that I'm setting the maximum equal to that first value. So that's sort of step one in the steps that I previously showed. Then it says, Hey, for all of the other integers, so two through N. So for all of these values, if the max is less than a I, which means if the max is less than our new value, cause our new value is a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, etc., Then our new max is that value return. This is what tells us what the final output would be. 
So the return is the max, where max is the largest element. Now I want to point out that this here is just a note, it's a comment that helps us as a person understand, but it's not something that the computer would read. There is a whole lot on pseudocode in your textbook in Appendix 3, and I've just listed some of them here just so that we're used to or somewhat familiar with things that we might see in the pseudocodes for the rest of the algorithms we'll talk about in this section. So notice if you're going to do a procedure, the procedure we would first write procedure and then we would say what the algorithm name is. So on the last one I said max and then this is the list and description of the input variables and that is what I did before. I said, hey, we're using A1, A2, A3, etc., and those are all integers. Here is a comment. That's what happened at the end when I had that in brackets. Uh, again, comments are not read by computers. They're just for people. If we're using a variable, we use variable, then a colon, and then equals, and then the expression. And then you've got a lot of conditional statements, and we should be familiar with conditionals, but it might just be an if condition then statement, or if condition then block of statements, um, or it could be if condition then statement one, else statement two, or if condition then statement one, else if condition two, then statement two, if condition three, then statement three, etc. So the else just says, hey, if statement, if it's not this one, then it's gonna be this one, or then it's gonna be this one. A few more commands in pseudocode you might see. So this one is for some variable. So for some variable equal to an initial value to some final value. And so remember before we said, for i and we said that started at 2 to n so that told me that that subscript was 2 through n and then it tells us what's happening statement or block of statements or we can say for elements with a certain property same thing for this then some statement is true we can have while so while something, some condition, then statement, which is very similar. And then of course, this is what we had on the last one. Our return or our output is going to be the output of our algorithm or what the computer would then give us as a result of the algorithm. There are certain properties that an algorithm must have. First of all, it needs an input and an input basically needs to be um, from a specified set. So we have to specify what values are um, possible input values. Um, output, obviously this is from the algorithm. So after it does everything we want it to do, then that is the output value. Um, these are the solution and obviously the point of our algorithm. Correctness, this one's kind of a give me. The algorithm should produce a correct value or values from each input. So we want to make sure that whatever algorithm, algorithm we create does what we want it to do. Finiteness, which means there should be a closed number of steps. So that means we want it to eventually end and give us an output. Effectiveness, we want it to be obviously correct and also in a finite amount of time. And so when we talk about some of these algorithms, we will say, hey, this is an effective algorithm, but maybe it's not the most effective just because it takes a lot longer. And then generality should work for all problems of a specific form or of a desired form. 
So we should be able to use it for more than just the set we created it for. In the next three lessons, we're going to look at the three different types of problems that we're going to use algorithms with. So searching problems is where we want to find a solution in a list. So we are looking for something in a list and so we're searching for it. For sorting problems, we want to put items in increasing order. And that could be increasing in the alphabet or it could be numerically as well. And optimization, uh, optimization, excuse me, we're looking for the min or the max of something over all of the possible inputs.